Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, it's a joy to be with you here tonight as we gather before the Lord our God to hear the word, as we'll hear from James tonight, to receive with meekness uh, the implanted word. And may indeed God grant that to us tonight for his sake. Um, if you picked up the green insert here, you'll see all the calendar of events that are coming up this upcoming week and, and some of the important announcements as we kind of get to the, you know, the beginning of summer here or just at the cusp of it. Uh, you'll see that the puppets are going to be in service this upcoming Sunday, and it's also their cinnamon roll sale as well. So um, it's always delicious. It's going to smell fantastic when you come in. So feel free to come on back in. If you're here tonight, you can come out tomorrow, uh, Sunday uh, to receive some of those. Uh, you'll see the LWML is having a meeting on May 1st. That'll be next Wednesday. Uh, Ascension service. You guys are always fortunate, right? 40 days after he rose from the dead, uh, Jesus ascended into heaven. Since he rose on a Sunday, 40 days later, it's always on a Thursday. Um, fortunately, we already have service on Thursday night. So if you come on May 9th, uh, there at 6.30, it will be Ascension service that week. Uh, with Sunday being a completely different service. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. It's always one of my favorite uh, church holidays as we recognize the work of our Lord. Um, he who is risen must be ascended. Uh, thanks be to God for that. Uh, you also see the graduation blessing, the confirmation, all of that's in the works here in the next couple of weeks as well. So thanks be to God. May God indeed bless that and keep that in your prayers as we approach. You'll see uh, last Sunday we uh, blessed and dedicated the little free pantries. Uh, you can see one if you parked on this side there. It's kind of right on the corner by the fountain. Uh, so if you're curious about that, ask us for more information. Uh, some great work was done on that. Uh, so as we gather this evening, we are before our Lord, who is indeed here to water and tend his people, to give them all that they need for eternal life, that we might reap a harvest. May the Lord be with us then in that task. And as we gather, let us now stand and present ourselves before the Lord and receive from him this night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his infinite mercy, has given his only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for his sake, God forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing responsibly now our intro it. Sing to the Lord a new song, Alleluia. For he has revealed his righteousness, in the sight of the nations, Alleluia. salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to 
the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Alleluia. For he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Alleluia. We sing now the Kyrie, and this is the feast. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded, 
and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation, please be seated as the word is implanted in us this night. The Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, 12th chapter. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout, sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. We speak the verse together. Alleluia! The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Alleluia! We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. The second reading, the epistle reading this night, comes from James's letter to the church, chapter 1, also our sermon text tonight. James writes, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, from whom, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And reverence for Christ our Lord, who is among us this night with his word, please stand as you are able as we begin first by singing the Alleluia. Now, I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, 
For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation, please be seated. Our sermon hymn this night is hymn number 528, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Well, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours, implanted into you from God your Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. St. James, he's writing to Christians, and he exhorts them to put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Receive with meekness. That word, meekness, what is that? Because meekness seems to be rather important, as James lays it out. Of course, not to the world so much, of course. But meekness is necessary if one is to be a Christian. St. Paul, in fact, lists meekness as one of the fruit of the Spirit. It's often translated as gentleness, humility, words like these. St. James stresses that meekness is what enables someone to believe and hold fast to God's Word. 
receive with meekness the implanted word. And God's word, of course, is able to save your soul. And of course, that means your whole being, by the way. Soul in the Bible is, not, is the whole person, not just a part of them, their spirit, as we often think. So to have God's word, someone must receive the word with meekness. Now, meekness is probably not a word that comes up often in conversations, not for me, for sure. But when you read the Bible, you will discover that the prophets, Paul, James, and Jesus, stress that meekness is very important. It's a virtue, quality, that a Christian has. But how can someone receive the word with meekness? Perhaps it's helpful to think of the crops that are about to be planted throughout our country, and especially as you drive around here in Wisconsin, the fields are getting ripe, literally, and ready to be put into the ground. If you have a garden at home, think about what's growing in them. Think about the work that you need to do in your garden. Once you have implanted the seeds into the ground, what kind of work does that plant need in order to grow? Well, first and foremost, that seed needs time. The plant just doesn't come up the moment you plant it in the ground, much as it is to my boys when they planted seeds a few years ago, they were rather dumbfounded the next day when there was no plant coming up out of the dirt. It needs time. And because it needs time, it needs a lot of things, a lot of care, a lot of energy that goes into making sure that the plant can make it. You see, you want that plant to make it to the harvest season. It takes weeks and months to finally pick that ear of corn or to harvest that never-ending batch of zucchini. But as you wait for the time, for the time to come, for that seed to grow into a fruit or vegetable, it needs a lot of care and attention to make it. Daily, it needs sunlight. Daily, it needs water. The soil around the crop, it needs manure. It needs fresh soil planted around it to give it nutrients. The garden needs to have the weeds plucked up. The land needs to be cultivated if there is any hope for that plant to make it to the harvest. We have to buy that plant time that it needs to grow. And the plant, it cannot refuse this care. Thankfully, plants often don't. Meekness, then, in this context, as James lays it out, is the fact that the plant needs to receive oxygen and and carbon dioxide and sunlight and, and water and soil. It needs those things. And it cannot be ashamed to receive those same things day after day, month after month. It needs it constantly. The plant cannot provide these things for itself. It needs to receive them from the care of another. It needs to have something happen to it because the plant by itself is powerless. It is meek. It's a good thing then that plants don't fight our care. They just receive it. Can you imagine if you came to water your garden and the plant refused to drink the water that you poured on it? It would shrivel up. Imagine if those beautiful sunflowers out in Auburndale and in other places in the area, imagine if they didn't turn to follow the sun, to receive the energy that it gets from it. It would soon wither. Imagine if you came to weed out your garden to come to that tomato plant and make sure it's all cleared and and ready and growing, and the tomato plant shooed you off and told you off for coming to tear up the weeds that threaten its existence. If the weeds are not pulled, the plant will choke. It will not thrive. There will be nothing to harvest. The crops and the plants, they cannot refuse the things that they need for sustenance day after day. They need the same care and attention. And as we see in our lives, as we plant and grow things, plants are not ashamed that they're so needy and so lowly. The plants in our gardens and fields are meek. 
They cannot save themselves. They are powerless. They need someone to care for them. Likewise, dear Christian, is you. God has planted his seed into your heart. The gospel, the forgiveness of your sins, eternal life with God. In your baptism, you received this gift, the helper, as Jesus calls him in the the gospel lesson today, the Holy Spirit. This means that new life is yours. It's planted in you. Jesus has won it for you. He's planted this word in you. As Paul says, we carry this treasure in clay jars. But what now? The seed is planted, but now it needs time to mature. God is looking to receive a harvest from you. So what does a Christian need to grow and mature? Well, they need the time, the time that is necessary to make it to the harvest. And that harvest is the day when Jesus comes again with great glory. Now the time that we need is not just passive time. It's not sitting back and, and thinking that the plants will just grow all on their own, twiddling their thumbs, waiting for the day that Jesus comes. There is work to do. There are things to receive. Every day, as a Christian, we must receive things if we are to make it to harvest day. Christians then need to hear and receive the Word of God. Daily, God's Word must be applied to us if we are to grow into the Christians that God wills for us to be. Prayer is a chief component in this. We must pray that Jesus would open our hearts to receive the implanted and the nutrients that come from God's Word. Children must be taught the Scriptures From the moment they are born, it doesn't start sometime undesignated later in life, the moment they're here, it's time to cultivate. It's now is the time. Hearts need to be tilled. Stony hearts need to be cleared away from the field. The scriptures must be read to them. Story time, bedtime, constantly, and as you grow older, it stays the same. Christians, they need to gather when the dinner bell rings at 6.30 on Thursday. Here you are. 9 a.m. Sunday, Christians need the light of God's word to shine upon them in order to discern truth from falsehood. For the Spirit is going to come, Jesus says, in order to lead you into all the truth. Christians need to be about the task of weeding out their lives of sin, cutting vices out of their lives so that faith does not choke. Can you imagine a Christian saying, I don't need the Word of God. You see, unlike plants, we have a terrible tendency to resist God's care, to receive what God would have for us, for our eternal salvation. Or perhaps saying that, he has already heard the Word. I already know that. I've heard that before, right? Can you imagine a plant saying, he doesn't need a new layer of soil. I don't need another day of the sun coming to shine on me. I got it yesterday. A Christian, he needs to grow. He needs this word again and again. That's what James is getting at here. He cannot grow if he's not in God's word, in worship, Bible study. And if you're not growing, just like any plant, you're dying. Each of us needs to hear and be in the word of God constantly in order for us to make it to the final harvest We need to hear God's word again and again. We cannot think of ourselves as so well learned that we don't need to hear the same things again. To receive in meekness, it means to hear Luke chapter 2 at Christmas again and again, year after year, even if you have those words memorized. Meekness is to grill into us the words of the small catechism, and so you can say it forward and backward. Meekness is not despising the same gifts, the same absolution, the same word, week after week, time after time. Just as plants need the same care day after day, so too do you. You and I need the same care that comes from God in this life. 
for we have many enemies who would seek to devour and destroy God's good garden. That is what meekness means. It means that we cannot think of ourselves as masters. We must think of ourselves as poor and wretched and needing God's continuous care and mercy and love every single day. We can never think of ourselves as above it. In this age, we are plants that need time to mature, to make it to the harvest. To that end, you and I need the church. That is what we need to help till the soil. We need pastors and DCEs and church workers called by God to water seeds, to clear weeds. And we see here that meekness is not a quality that we can will in ourselves. It's not in a person's willpower to be humble. Because after all, once a person says, I'm a really humble person, they're no longer humble. They're boasting. Rather, being humble is something that happens to you. You cannot make yourself meek. It is something that happens to you. You receive it. Meekness is a gift that God grants to us through the power of his Holy Spirit. So indeed, pray that you would receive God's Holy Spirit. Pray for that each day. Never tire of praying and asking for that. For the Father will never deny someone who asks for the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that in Luke chapter 11. That's what it means to be meek. It's letting God have his way with you and giving him the length of time it takes to do it. Meekness is letting God do the same thing to you time after time. Just like a gardener does the same thing time after time to the plant. That sustained care to let it sink in. This means that the work of our salvation is the work of our entire life. To be made holy is partly to receive the gift of salvation again and again. As Christians, part of being meek is not thinking that God will just lump all the water on you at once. That's how you drown a plant, after all. We must be at the scriptures all of our life. That's the constant watering, and it produces a lot of good in us. We cannot cheat the Spirit, though try as we might. We must always receive the Word. We cannot allow ourselves to think that God is done teaching. Once we've heard it, God's done saying it, and we can move on. We need the same things time after time. The same things until we die. That is what Jesus means in our gospel lesson, too. When he says that there's more that he wants to tell the apostles, there's more that you need to hear, but you cannot bear it at the moment. So that's why Jesus says that he will send them the Spirit, which will teach them the whole truth, all of it, to instruct them, and to cause them to bear fruit in their lives, fruit that now causes us to bear fruit. It's their word that we hear that causes faith to come from us. You see, the enemy of meekness is not wanting to hear, it, well, sorry, scratch that, the enemy of meekness is wanting to hear something new for the sake of hearing something new. The enemy of meekness is getting bored with God's care for our souls and wanting something else. The enemy of meekness is getting tired of the same teachings of Jesus, which grants to us salvation. Do not be deceived by smooth talkers, those who would have you be moved from the true and living word of God. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, from whom there is no shadow or variation due to change. That coming down from above, just like rain, coming down to water the crops again and again. God does not change in this regard, meaning that God does not do one thing here and something different over there. God does not work differently for some people than he does for others. Each need the same tending. Each need the same word. Each needs the same gospel. Each needs the same pruning of sin, needing the weeding out of sin in their lives. Remove all wickedness and rampant filthiness, as James puts it. To fight sin, to align with God, to allow God to take those sins against the wall and put them to death. It is God's will for you 
to bring about the fruit of your salvation. For God has brought you forth by the word of his truth. That's the word he has planted in you. And we should then be a kind of a first fruit of his new creatures. So know this, beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let everyone then be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger and impatience. For the anger of man does not produce the fruit of God's righteousness that God requires at the harvest. So to do this, take off all that filthy work that besmirches God's good name on you. Put away unkept wickedness that wars against you and your soul and your salvation. And allow for God to grow that implanted word in you. Do not be slack in this salvation. Do not put it off. Get to work. Harvest time is coming. It's nearer now to us than when we first believed. Meekness, it's not a value that's highly valued out there in the world, in our lives, in this country, right? In a place that often emphasizes seizing your rights and self-promotion and individual expression. But as Christians, we must cultivate that. We must be different than the world around us. It takes much more work to produce a Christian than it does to produce an American or any other citizen. But it is work that we must allow in our lives, and it's work that has to be accomplished. For the harvest is coming, and we desire to bear fruit, fruit that will last when the Lord Jesus comes to toss out and burn the chaff, but to bring the wheat and the goods into his barn. So remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he himself said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. God grant that growth to you and to this congregation. May it be done for Christ's sake. May you receive the implanted word with meekness in order to produce a harvest. May it grow in you, because now, alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, indeed. Go in his peace. Amen. Now, let us stand. Let us confess our faith in who our God is and what he has done for us. Let's do it again and again as we confess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we bring forward our offerings and tithes that we have collected and placed in the basket prior to service. We bring them now to present them before our Lord and our King. As we sing, seek ye first.
now go before our God and our King this night. Please stand as we bring our prayers and petitions before him. Dear God, Father in heaven, from whom comes every good and every perfect gift, look with mercy upon us, your needy children on this earth, and grant us grace that your holy name would be kept holy by us and in all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and in the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Dear Father, into your merciful hands we commend all for whom we pray. For Leah, Olivia, Julie, Ardell, Tammy, Allie, Joan, Jerry, Charles, Chris, Lane, Kim, Roxanne, Don, Alice, Shirley, Doreen, and Greg. Lord, with thanksgiving for Vanessa, who has given birth to a son. For Travis, who is back home from surgery and recovering well. And for Sean, who is also back home. Lord, for those who serve in our military and our armed forces, that you would keep them safe and watch over them, especially from our congregation, Daniel, Hunter, and Adam. And Lord, for those women who are pregnant, that you would bless, sustain, and keep them and their children to bring them to term, to bring their children to the waters of baptism, that they might be sustained in the life worthy of you. Lord, especially for Olivia, Anna, and Samantha. And Lord, for those who work in your church, who tend the fields to water the plants and to weed the gardens, that, Lord, that faith may abound, that you would bring growth to your church, that you would be with Pastor Matthew Wood, our missionary in Indonesia. And for those who are being sent out, Lord, for call day this past week at our seminaries, that churches, as they receive their pastors with great joy, as the word we proclaim in their midst. Be with also those, our seminarians, Christopher Shearman and Stephen Steingraver and their families. And Lord, for the family of Bonnie, that you would, Bonnie Long, that you would guard and keep the family and keep them in the hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant us this day our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and from selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all of our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace, and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin would ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit, to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world in its ways, to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, dear Father in heaven, deliver us from all evil of body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and to answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Indeed, may God's word grow in you and abound and produce a heart. As we conclude our service this night, we sing our final hymn, hymn number 633, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing.